I know of five ways that an entrepreneur can actually raise money for their company. The first, and I do not recommend this, but it is a possibility in the world of possibilities, you could rob money to actually finance your company. I do not recommend this at all. It's really hard to run a company from jail from what I hear. But you could rob money, you could try to win the lottery, get some money from illicit means. No, don't do that. The second way that I know how to raise money for your company is government grants. A lot of startups actually don't think about this because it's not always possible in your country. But a lot of governments actually to support their own innovation ecosystems and to grow their innovation ecosystems, they actually end up looking and providing grants sometimes to startups or sometimes they'll provide matching funding for startups if they raise additional capital. Have a look at your country, have a look at what governments are actually offering what deals. Right now in September of 2020, I do know that Startup Chile is a government program run by the government of Chile where they will give you $40,000 to actually build your company. In exchange, you have to move to Santiago, Chile, live there for at least six months, and then you actually have to do things that promote the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Chile. They do have additional programs where you can raise up to several hundred thousand dollars of follow-on capital for companies. The government of Chile has been working very, very hard to actually promote venture investing and helping companies scale out of their local ecosystem. Honestly, I think it's been probably one of the best government innovation programs to grow a startup ecosystem that I've come across worldwide. Government options happens occasionally. Um, I believe Australia a couple of years ago had a program where they would give you one dollar for every dollar that you raised from angel investors or venture capitalists, so they would actually match your funding one-to-one. -one. I don't know if that program is still going on. These things tend to depend on who's in charge politically in whatever government and what their agenda is and how they're actually trying to grow. My suspicion is, is that in the economic recovery after coronavirus, there's gonna be a lot more push from governments to actually invest in small businesses and companies. So just keep your ear to the ground for that. It's really nice because you don't have to sell any of your company with a government grant. Sometimes it comes with a lot of other strings attached in terms of what you have to do, what you don't have to do. Number three is borrowing money. The fact is, is that the vast majority of companies that are started and actually grow end up financing themselves through debt. It's hard. Um, I do not always recommend this, but it can be a very good option for companies. It's really hard to actually raise debt if you are just starting off, if you just have an idea, a deck, a pitch. It's really hard to kind of get off the ground and have someone loan you money to actually build a company. Debt is usually reserved for companies that are already selling things. If I have purchase orders that I can take to a bank and say, hey, I have all of these purchase orders, but I need, you know, $250,000 to buy this equipment. Can you guys loan me the money and then we can actually sell this equipment and we'll pay you right back. Invoice factoring, we'll talk a lot about that um, debt financing options down the road in another video. Credit cards are sometimes there for entrepreneurs to actually raise money. It can really put you in a bind if you actually build your company off of your credit cards, because what if your company dies? Then you end up having, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100. I actually have a friend who had $500,000 in credit card debt for his company. He was able to pay it off. That was really, really hard. But debt is an option. It's not a great option a lot of times for early stage startups to actually building a company, but it is an option. Number four on the list is selling stock. This is what you would traditionally think of in terms of raising angel money or raising venture capital or raising money. This is what entrepreneurs tend to actually think of and refer to a lot is that they're actually going out and they're selling part of their stock. They're selling a piece of their company. We'll dive into what stock is, how that works, the mechanics of actually doing that. But when people say that they're raising money from an angel investor, nine times out of 10, what they're referring to is they've actually sold some stock or they've sold the option to buy some stock in the future to an angel investor, to a venture capitalist. Um, that is a fourth way of actually raising money for your company. And then lastly is number five, number five, revenue. 
actually selling a product to consumers and actually using that money and then reinvesting it to grow your company. Ultimately, every company has to get to the point, if they're going to stay afloat, if they're going to survive, you need to be selling stuff and you need to be making an income to actually grow a business. This whole Silicon Valley marketing of, I have an idea and people are going to give me $5 million to build my idea, that almost never happens unless the people are uber uber connected to the investors unless their dad works at like sequoia capital or you know they went to school with someone at harvard or stanford and this and that and the other thing the chances of you being able to actually raise money on an idea are pretty close to none and so generally what investors actually want is they want to see you have a company have a business they want to see you selling stuff they want you to have a tiny little product that's in the market that's actually selling stuff that you're proving that consumers or actually going to buy, and then you can actually sell some of your stock to that investor to actually use that money to actually grow your business and scale it. What is the smallest product? What is the minimum viable product, if you want to use the Silicon Valley terms, that I can actually sell to actually start generating some cash flow so I can start generating some income? Unfortunately, you know, if you want to build a nuclear reactor, it's really hard to pre-sell a nuclear reactor. If you want to build an amazing new compression algorithm that you've actually invented and you want to raise some money against that, but it's not, nobody has actually purchased, it's going to be really hard for you to actually raise money, at least in the Silicon Valley and with the investors that I know and that I'm around. Almost all of them want you to be able to have some revenue and then they will actually buy some of your stock for you. And so out of the five ways that I know of to raise money, stealing it, do not recommend government grants, borrowing money, selling your stock and revenue. The only two of these five that an entrepreneur can actually control are stealing it, which I do not recommend, and revenue. So a lot of times I actually think and I write and encourage entrepreneurs to actually think about what is the quickest thing that I can actually sell. I tend to actually recommend to startups to focus on revenue to actually focus on growing a company, growing a company quickly, getting some positive unit economics, which we'll talk about in another video, and then actually leveraging that story to going to investors and raising capital from them. We'll continue, we'll talk about uh, what are investors, what types of investors there are, where do you find investors, how the mechanics of that investment actually work, and we'll go from there. But until then, um, thanks for listening and looking forward to having you on for the ride and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.